Good morning. Happy Friday. The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmail at ybcc.edu and I'll respond as soon as I can. So today we start the final chapter of Math 85, which is chapter five. And today we're gonna to look at section 5.1, which has to do with rules for exponents. There are some patterns that we can uh, look at and then establish from there some rules that are shortcuts that we can use when dealing with exponents. The first one is if we have something like X, that basically means we have one times X to the one power over one, but we don't tend to, to list all of these uh, implied ones. Just X by itself means we have X to the one power. So if there is no exponent written, there is an implied one there. This is important because later on, as in the next day of class, we're gonna look at zero as an exponent. So having no exponent there means it's an implied one. All right, now let's say we have something like this, x cubed times x squared. If we were to expand that, x cubed would be x times x times x, and x squared would be x times x. If we were to take that and compress it again, we'd have x to the fifth power. And after doing this a few times, you'll notice a pattern, and that is, that if we add the exponents on the common base, we get the result. So what we say is when you are multiplying two powers with the same base, we add the exponents and attach them to the common base. Let's look at some more examples of that. If we have five to the third power, times five to the fourth power, that's five to the three plus four, or five to the seventh power. And you can go straight there, I'm just showing where the seven came from. If you have three to the fourth power times three to the sixth power, that's three to the 10th power. If you have a times a cubed times a to the fifth, that's a to the ninth power. Where did I get the nine? There's an implied one on just the plane a. So we've got one plus three is four plus five is nine. If we've got, let's see here, t plus one, the quantity to the fifth power times t plus one, the quantity to the third power, that's t plus one, the quantity to the five plus three is eighth power. Okay, let's say we have this, we have u cubed times v to the fifth, times u to the fourth times v to the fifth. Well, multiplication is commutative. We could go to all the trouble to rewrite it like this. And then say this is u to the seventh, v to the 10th. That looks like an r, it's supposed to be a v. Looks like an r as well. Or we could just look at this and say, oh, we've got u to the seventh, v to the 10th power. So you don't have to write all this out, but if it helps you to get the correct answer, I recommend you do so. Okay, so uh, that's known as the product rule. When we're multiplying two powers with the same base, we add the exponents and attach it to the common base. It isn't necessary that you know that it's called the pro product rule, but you should know how to apply it in the correct situation, all right? In contrast to that, we have what's known as the power rule. This is where we have a power raised to a power. So this says we have what? Two factors of x cubed. But now it's in the form that we could use the product rule. So this would be x to the sixth. Well, if we look at this enough, we, we find enough examples, we start to realize that 
this multiplied together gives you that. So in general, we have a to the m raised to the n power is a to the m times n. Notice these similar, but yet very different. So be careful. So let's say I have uh, y to the fourth power, all to the fifth power. That's y to the 20th power. But if I had y to the fourth power times y to the fifth power, that would be y to the ninth power. So be careful that you don't get those two rules mixed up. Okay, next we have the quotient rule. Let's see here. And that says, uh, for example, let's say we have x to the fifth power divided by x squared. Well, if we did this problem the long way, x to the fifth power would be x times x times x times x times x over x squared, which is x times x. But if we were to come in and simplify and reduce this, these all would turn into ones, and we end up with what? x cubed. And again, if we applied this many times, we'd see a pattern, and that is 5 minus 2 is 3. So what we have in general here, when we're dividing two powers with the same base, we subtract the bottom exponent from the top exponent and apply it to the base. Now, we need to be really careful. Here, when we're adding the exponents, addition is commutative. So whether we took uh, 4 times 5, excuse me, 4 plus 5, or 5 plus 4, we get the same result. But here, we have to be sure that we subtract the bottom exponent from the top exponent and not the other way around. Here's some more examples of the quotient rule. Let's say we had 8 to the 12th power over 8 to the 4th power. That would be 8 to the 12 minus 4 power or 8 to the 8th power. And again, you can go directly there. I'm just showing how we get there. 10 to the fourth power over 10 squared is 10 squared. Uh, let's see, 0.25y all to the ninth power over 0.25y all to the third power would be 0.25y to the sixth power. Likewise, r to the eighth power, s to the ninth power over rs, well, we would have r to the eight minus one power, which is r to the seventh power, times s to the ninth divided by s to the one, which is s to the eighth power. Okay, let's see. Uh, ah. Next, we have the power of a product. So basically, we have a product raised to a power. For instance, 3x, the quantity to the fourth power. In a case where we have a product raised to a power, we take that power outside and we attach it to each of the factors inside. And then three to the fourth power is 81. So we get 81 times x to the fourth power. We need to be careful and not to think of this as the distributive power. Uh, and we'll talk more about why that is not a good idea later on. OK, uh, let's say I have 2y to the fourth power. That's 2 to the fourth, y to the fourth, which is 2, 4, 8, 16, y to the fourth power. OK. What if we have 2x squared cubed? Well, that's 2 cubed x squared cubed. So we attach the outside exponent to each factor inside. 2 cubed is 8, but now we have a power raised to a power. So that takes us back to the power rule, and we would multiply those exponents. So within one problem simplifying, we may use more than one of the rules. Finally, we have the power of a, let's see, power of a quotient. That's where we have a, 
quotient or a division, a fraction raised to a power, then we apply the outside exponent to both the numerator and the denominator of the inside fraction. Two cubed is eight, so we get eight over y cubed. Okay, so we've got all these rules. Let's look at some more examples of how they work. Uh, let's see here. Ah, we've got some problems that say, identify the base and the exponent in each expression. So we've got that and that and that. In this first problem, the base is four. The exponent, uh, yes, is three. In the second example, the base is four and the exponent is three. In the third example, the base is negative four and the exponent is three. Keep in mind here, we have four times four times four. Here we have four times four times four with a negative sign in front. And here we have negative four times negative four times negative four. This says write each expression in an equivalent form using an exponent. So let's say we've got four t times four t times four t times four t. That would be 4t, the quantity raised to the 1, 2, 3, 4th power. Or how about this? t over 2 times t over 2 times t over 2 would be t over 2 to the 3rd power. m plus 4 times m plus 4 would be m plus 4, the quantity, squared. Okay, let's see here. So we're gonna just look at a bunch more examples of these rules. It says use the product and quotient rules for exponents to simplify each expression. Y cubed times Y to the fourth over Y times Y squared. Well, recall that when you're simplifying an expression, uh, the fraction bar is a uh, grouping symbol separating the numerator from the denominator. So in the numerator, I have y to the 3 plus 4 is seventh power. In the denominator, I have y to the 1 times y to the 2, which is y to the third power. Then using the quotient rule, I get y to the 7 minus 3, which is y to the fourth power. Uh, let's see here. Here's another example. We have h cubed times h to the sixth times h all over h to the ninth. In the numerator, we have h to the three plus six is nine plus one is 10 over h to the ninth power. And then h to the 10th divided by h to the ninth is h to the 10 minus nine or h to the one power. So I would just write h. Uh, let's see here. This says, use the power rule for exponents to simplify each expression. Now, again, I said you didn't need to know the names of the rules, and here they're giving you specific directions using the names, but you should get to the point where you can look at a problem and when it says to uh, simplify the expression, you know which rules to use to get to the final simplification. Here we have three squared to the fourth power. Well, a power raised to a power, you would multiply the exponents. Or how about n to the 25th power all to the fourth power? That would be n to the 25 times 4 or 100th power. Uh, let's see here. This says use the product and power rules for exponents to simplify each expression. We've got y cubed times y to the fourth all to the fourth power. Now, even though we have a product raised to a power, we would still want to start, start inside because we can multiply those two powers because they have the same base. So this would be y to the seventh to the fourth power, which is y to the 28th power. We need to be careful. Let's say we have x cubed times y squared. That is not xy to the fifth power. That is x cubed times y squared. The bases aren't the same. 
So the rule we looked at doesn't apply. So you need to not only focus on when to use the rules, but when not to use the rules, when they don't apply. Uh, let's see here, this one. B squared to the fifth power times, oops, times B cubed squared. So we start out with a power raised to a power. So we would multiply the exponents times a power raised to a power. We would multiply the exponents. Now we're multiplying two powers with the same base. So we add the exponents. So again, you've got to be careful to distinguish between those two rules. It's easy to get them confused. Uh, let's see here. How about this situation? We have 6a, the quantity squared. So this is six squared a squared or 36 a squared. We have negative two x squared y to the fourth all to the fifth power. So that gives us negative two to the fifth power x squared to the fifth power y to the fourth to the fifth power. Well, negative two to the fifth power if you have five negative factors, that's an odd number of negative factors. So you're going to get negative. Two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16, times two is 32. And then we have x to the 10th, y to the 20th power. Uh, let's see here. Let's say we've got the following a, b squared cubed over a squared b squared. So the first thing we would do is deal with the numerator. We'd have a cubed times b squared cubed, which is a, excuse me, a, excuse me, a cubed b to the sixth power over a squared b squared. Then we can deal with this, a cubed over a squared is a to the one power, and that's in the numerator. b to the sixth over b to the second is b to the fourth, and that's also in the numerator. So if we wrote it this way, we would continue and go on to our final answer here. And let's see here. That's where I got that one. How about this situation? We have negative 3a to the 12th power over negative 3a to the 10th power, which is negative 3a squared, which is negative 3 squared, a squared, which is 9a squared. Okay, let's see here. r over s to the fourth power is r to the fourth power over s to the fourth power. Seven g to the fourth divided by six h cubed all to the second power would be, let's see, I would actually look inside first, but there's nothing I can do in there. Oops, so come on eraser. There we go. I'm going to get seven squared g to the fourth squared over six squared h cubed squared. Okay. So basically what I'm doing there is a combination of the, the uh, product rule and the quotient rule. Okay. Or the, what a power of a product, power of a quotient, they call it. See, I don't even know the names. All right. 7 squared is 49 g to the 8th over 36 h to the 6th power. And let's see here. How about this one? s to the 5th power times s to the 6th power over s squared times s squared all to the fourth power. So 
Starting inside, in the numerator, we get s to the 11th power over the denominator, which would be s to the fourth power. And all of that is raised to the fourth power. But s to the 11th over s to the fourth would be s to the seventh power raised to the fourth power, which in the end would be s to the 28th power. So final answer, s to the 28th power. Uh, let's see here. Let's take a look at these situations. A cubed times A cubed, A cubed cubed, and A cubed plus A cubed. Well, the first one, we have a product of two factors with the same base, so we would add the exponents. In the second example, we have a product, a power raised to a power, so we would multiply the exponents. In the third one, this takes us all the way back to chapter two where we're adding like terms. We've got two of the a cubed, so this would be two a cubed. So be careful, take a good look at this, how different they are. All right. Well, that's all I have for you. So um, let's see, I'll be back this afternoon at 1.15 with an office hour. There's no class on Monday, it's President's Day. So I will be back on Tuesday morning for the next class. I hope you have a good safe weekend. And that's all for today.